Hey everybody, welcome back to another fun and exciting Algebra 2 class. Today we are going to be on lesson 12.4, talking about sampling distribution, and that is on page 578, page 578. What we're going to be talking about today is um, in the last, well, let, let's kind of set this up by talking about the last class. In the last class, we talked about the idea of finding the distribution of every single individual event, okay? In this class, we're going to talk about instead of finding it for the individual events, finding it for the mean of the events or uh, like a sample of the events, like taking all the events together and finding for a group of events, okay? So that's the difference. And we will be uh, talking about standard deviation and some other things uh, along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look down there and talk about the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. About halfway down that page, 578. Here is the formula for that, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. Let's talk about it. What does this mean? Well, we have the standard deviation sign right there of the what? of the X bar. What's the X bar? Of the average. So now we're finding a standard deviation of the average. And that equals, how do we find it? The standard deviation with an X. What does that mean? Well, it's the standard deviation of the individual values over the square root of the sampling size. Okay. So the sampling size may be 8, it may be 15, it may be 10. It's going to change based on how many things, how many categories are in your sample. Look down there at page number 578, and at the very bottom of the page, you're going to see the original data distribution, and that is found with the z-score. Okay, That's what we did last class. Then this is the sample distribution. Um, so with the z-score equals x-bar minus the mean over the standard deviation of x-bar. So we're going to be doing the same thing that we were doing before, except for now, instead of over just the standard deviation, like we were doing in the last class, we're going to be doing it over the standard deviation of x-bar, the, the one that we're doing today, the one that we're going to work on in this class is basically the same, but just a little bit different, okay? All right, let's look at the next page as an example. Suppose the daily snowfall from November to February in a city follows a normal distribution with the mean of 5 inches and the standard deviation of 2 inches. Compare z-scores of a day with 10 inches with a 5-day average of 10 inches. So this is the difference. The first part, the z-score of one day, that's what we were doing last class. Now this class, we're going to be doing the average of five days, okay? So let's look at that. Let's just go ahead and, and compare. So let me just go ahead. I'll just put like a line down here and we'll do the one side with the one we did yesterday and the other side with the new one from today. So let's do uh, yesterday's first. So the z-score is going to equal x minus m. So what is our x? We're doing the, we're doing the uh, first one here, one day with 10 inches. So the x is 10 inches minus 5 because that's the mean. And then we're going to divide that by our 2. Now, it's not, it's not an, a mean. It's not a standard deviation of the average there. It's just the standard deviation, at least on the first one that we're going to do. So go ahead and solve that, and we get z equals 5 over 2, or that would equal 2.5. Okay, so that's what we did last class. That's, there's nothing new there. Now, let's do it. This time, we're going to, before we can do, okay, go back one page at the bottom of the page where it talks about, the. this is on page 578, where it says the original data distribution. That's what we did yesterday, or that's what we did last class. This class, we're going to be doing the sample distribution. So look at the only change 
is we have x bar and standard deviation of x bar. So in order to get the z, in order to solve for the z score, we have to do something else first. What is that? We have to figure out the standard deviation of x bar. Okay, so that's the first thing. Our formula for that is standard deviation of x over square root of n. Just go ahead and fill that in. What is the standard deviation of x? It's right there. It's 2. So that's going to be 2 over the square root of n, which is what? Well, now we're on to the second part of the question. So it's the n is the number of days. What was our average? We had a five-day average. So it's going to be square root of 5. Okay, so if we do this, we're going to do 2 divided by the square root of 5. And that equals 0 0.894. 0 0.894. Now that doesn't equal 0 0.894. That is bacon 0 0.894 or about equal to. I just think it looks like bacon and I like food, so there you go. All right, so this is our decimal number that we're going to be using. Where are we going to be using it? Well, everywhere that you see the standard deviation of x bar. So go ahead and go back to the page before, and we need that formula now. We need the new sample distribution formula, the z-score. z equals uh, x bar minus m, so z equals x bar minus m over the standard deviation of x bar. Now we'll just fill that in. What is um, x bar? Okay, x bar is our average, which is 10 inches. Okay, it's right here. This is because this is the part of the question that we're on. So our x bar is 10 inches. Minus M. What's the M? Well, we still go back to the 5. Still a mean of 5. And that's going to be over the standard deviation of X bar, which is what we just found. That number right there, that 0.894. Go ahead and plug that in. Well, you could just do this and get 5. So go ahead and plug that in. 5 divided by... 5 divided by point. 894 and that's going to equal 5.593 5.5 5 they round it off looks like they decided to round it off to just one decimal point so we'll say 5.6 would be our answer okay now what they want you to do is they want you to compare the two so let's compare the two. Let's look here. On, on the first one, the one that we did it like we did yesterday, we got 2.5. On this one, with this new formula, we got 5.6. All right, then it wants you to go, no, step number three, the last thing that it asks you to do, uh, the original question right here, is which one is farther from the mean? We're going to compare the z-scores to tell us that. And if we look here, 2.5. Uh, is closer to zero, because zero is the, the z-score that's in the middle, uh, than, than 5.6. So this one would be closer to it. Um, sometimes it's going to depend on which one and how the data lies out and things like that. But in this case, um, it's always good just to compare your two numbers just to see where they land. But if you look in the book, it says the average of the 10 inches uh, was farther from the mean than the single day value. So in other words, this, this one, the 5.6, is farther away from the, the mean or from the center than the 2.5. All right, central limit theory. That's right there underneath of it. It's page 579. In central limit theory, there's really three things that we need to be aware of. Um, I'll kind of give you just a little bit of a rundown on it before I go into these three things. You can see some pictures there on page 579. Turn the page 580, and sometimes uh, your curve is going to look a little different based on uh, whether or not you're using the sample size or whether or not you're using just a daily high. 
So if you do, if you look there, there's a seven day average and the curve is taller uh, and skinnier than the curve for the daily high temperatures. So depending on which system you use, it can make your curve look different. Well, one thing, uh, well, three things here to uh, pay attention to when it comes to the central limit theorem. Number one, as the sample size n, n is the sample size, okay, increases, the sampling distribution will become more and more normal. So, like, as you stretch out, if you will, the sample size, as it grows, it's going to get more and more accurate. Okay, what do I mean by that? So, if you pull, the more people you pull, the more information you put in, the more days you you add to your thing, the more and more accurate your information gets. The more information that you can put in, that you can input, the more, the better your results are going to be on the output. Number two, the mean of the sample averages is equal to the mean of the individual values. All right, so what does that mean? Well, if you'll go to the next page, we'll kind of flip back and forth right here. Go to page 581, and you'll see the central limit theorem there. It's got a little box up in the upper right-hand corner. Here's what it means. The mean of X bar equals the mean. Now, that's what we're, we're basically making that assumption. We're, the book is just telling us that. We're not going to prove that. We don't have a formula for that. We're just taking this at face value. We're saying, okay, in central limit theorem, the mean of the X bar or the mean of the average, okay, equals the mean of the individual event. Number three, the standard deviation of sample averages is equal to the standard deviation of individual values divided by the square root of the sample size. So we, here's the formula. The uh, standard deviation of X bar, that's the averages, is going to equal the standard deviation over the square root of N. We've had that formula already, okay? So again, central limit theorem is the idea that there's, there's a limit on the center of the values. What do I mean by a limit on the center of the values? Well, no matter what, the, me, the mean is going to be the same. So whether or not you're talking about a some small sample size or the, the whole average, your mean is going to be the same. So let's say your mean for one is 65. Your mean for the other is also going to be 65. The curve, always the top, the peak of the curve, the top point of the curve is always going to be at the same point. That's what central limit theorem says. Okay, let's go to the example on the next page. This is 581. Let's do 12.4b. We'll be done after this. Suppose that high temperature in, this, in some city follows a normal distribution with the mean equaling 87 degrees and the standard deviation is 7. What is the probability that the average of 7 randomly selected days will have a high temperature exceeding 95 degrees? So we're kind of, you know, adding just a few different things that we've done here, but we're just going to plug into the, the formulas. All right, one thing is the mean of the X bar equals the mean. We've already talked about that. So what is the mean? It says it right there. The mean is 87. So the mean of the X bar and the mean, they all equal 87. Um, the standard deviation of X bar equals the standard deviation of X over, well, just the standard deviation, I guess, over the square root of N. What do we do on that one? We just plug into it. What's the standard deviation? 7 
over what's the n that's the seven randomly selected days square root of seven plug that into your calculator right there and that will give you 2.65 okay so that's what this equals right here the standard deviation of x bar equals 2.65 now we're ready to put it into our new uh, z-score formula where the z-score is equal to uh, x bar minus m over the standard deviation of x bar all right let's go ahead and fill that in what is x bar what is the average the average that it says here will select will have a temperature exceeding 95 so that what we're looking for there the X bar is the 95 and that's going to be minus the mean which is 87 and that's going to be over the standard deviation of X bar of the average every time I say X bar I'm saying average or I'm saying mean okay so don't get confused by that um 2.65 plug that into your calculator right there and that is going to yield 3.0 okay now what we do what we would do now is we would go to our um chart and what is 3.0 so we look at three and we look at zero so where's the three down here Where's the zero? It's right here. 0.999. Whoa, that's not a very good chance. So the chances of that happening are 100 or 1.000 minus 0.999. There's a 0 0.001 chance of that happening. <laughs> not a very good chance that it is going to be 95 degrees for seven straight days. I guess it's possible but the chances aren't very high. That might happen once in every thousand years. So it's not gonna happen very often, but that's how you do it. Plug into your formulas. I, I can't stress to you enough. First of all, you need to learn how to use this chart, okay? But really, the, the big deal of this chapter is just learning the formulas. I know some of you are confused on what this all means. It's not as important right now that you understand what it all means as much as you understand how to plug into the formula. Your understanding of statistics will come the more and more you do this. But the first thing that you need to do is learn your formulas, learn how to plug into your formulas. The math isn't that hard. In fact, your calculator does most of it. You just need to input it in, and then you'll get the um, answer coming out. Okay? All righty. Well, that's all I have for you. Hope you uh, understood some things there. If you missed anything, make sure you slide it back and watch it again, okay? We'll see you later. You have a good one. Bye-bye.